Hey guys, welcome back. It feels so good to be filming and making videos again. I took a week long break from YouTube and Instagram because I was suffering from severe eye irritation from makeup and eye dryness. So for those of you who don't know what happened and why I disappeared for a bit, I was just taking a week off to figure out what was causing the eye irritation. I did see an eye doctor and he just told me the same thing that they always tell me that my eyes are moderate to severely dry and all you can really do is use eye drops to um, help with the excessive watering because apparently your eyes are just like your skin where they will water to overcompensate for the dryness. So I was experiencing extremely watery eyes. I was filming a tutorial last week and as I was putting my lashes on, my eyes just started streaming with water. It was almost as if I was crying. And my eyes also just looked really irritated and glazed over. So I know it's the dryness, but aside from that, I think there might be a makeup item, specifically an eye makeup item that's causing the irritation. I have been using the eye drops and my eyes have been feeling a lot better. I've been using these Refresh Optive Advanced Lubricant Eye Drops that my doctor recommended. This sounds sponsored, but it's not. This is just what my doctor recommended. And um, I put them in my eyes an hour before doing my makeup and it's been a lot better. And through this whole experience this past week, I realized that a ton of you suffer from dry eyes as well or extremely watery eyes due to dry eyes. So bizarre. And I wanted to make today's video on how to do your makeup if you have watery eyes. And I just wanna say thank you for those of you who have been trying to help me out with this situation. I really appreciate your guys' support and just kind of, um, trying to give me suggestions and tips and just really trying to help me out. I really appreciate that because I know it sounds almost as if I'm making a big deal out of it, but when your job is to put makeup on every single day, sometimes multiple times in a day, it can be really frustrating when you feel like you can't successfully put your makeup on or actually look good with makeup on. So this video is going to be extremely chatty and possibly long. So if you're one of those people that have commented that I talk a little too much, this might be a good time for you to click out of this video. And for those of you who have extremely watery eyes, I hope my tips help you out when doing your own makeup. So if you're interested, keep on watching. I've already prepped my skin, so I'm just gonna show you guys what I used. Aside from the watery eyes, I also developed a dry patch underneath my right eye. It was making my eyes look really wrinkled, really dry, and everything I placed underneath it would crease. I've only been using vitamin E oil, natural vitamin E oil, underneath my eyes, no eye creams or eye products. And my doctor approved of this because I know oily eye products can cause milia, the little white bumps underneath your eye, but she said that was perfectly fine. And for a moisturizer, I used the Avene Tolerance Extreme Cream. If you are someone with super sensitive skin where your skin's always turning red, everything that you apply to it burns, I highly, highly recommend this moisturizer. I think it only has like six ingredients in it and it is so soothing, so hydrating. I absolutely love this moisturizer and I think it has really reduced the amount of redness I used to have around my nose and mouth area. There's still a little bit, but definitely not like how it used to be. So that is what I used today to prep my skin. Now onto the makeup and I'm gonna be really strategic with my foundation placement, concealer and powder. What really irritates me is when your eyes water on these outer corners, which is what was happening to my eyes, it dissolves all the face makeup and it leaves this dramatic gap because think of it, you're putting foundation, concealer, powder, highlight, and when your eyes water profusely on the outer edges, you get this gap of skin and then face makeup. So instead of applying foundation all over, I just really focused on making my actual skin look really good. So the two primers I've been using and I've been really obsessed with are from Jouer. One is an anti-aging moisture primer and the other one is an anti-blemish matte primer. So I apply the anti-blemish matte primer anywhere where I have active breakouts. And I really love that these primers are oil-free, hypoallergenic, paraben-free, silicone-free, fragrance-free, and dermatologist-tested. And then everywhere else, I'm gonna be applying the anti-aging moisture primer. So this just gives like a little added boost of hydration anywhere that you're dry, especially right now during winter. And then in order to make all of my skin look really dewy and fresh, since I'm not gonna be applying a foundation all over, I slather my face in the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Champagne Pop. So I just apply this all over. And then I'm gonna use my Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation Stick to cover up any imperfections. So using a stick foundation or one that is thicker and creamier and a little more solid, 
and also full coverage is going to be key in doing this makeup because it's gonna allow you to place it where you need it and then blend it out everywhere else. I'm gonna pick it up on my finger and warm it up and start applying the foundation wherever I have problem areas. So right here. That way the most amount of product is going on the areas that need it. That's all you really need to cover. You don't need to cover your entire face. I always like to place it right here because of my sunspots and then I'm just gonna blend it out. And then I try to avoid this area, but I am gonna take whatever foundation is left over on the brush or sponge <laughs> and apply it underneath my eyes and on the lids. Why is Mika's fur is seriously flying around everywhere? And there you have it. I just blended the full coverage foundation everywhere else, but the amount of foundation on the other areas of my skin is actually really light. It's not a really thick layer, which is gonna be great for when your eyes water on those outer corners. So now I'm just taking some translucent powder and setting the under eyes because that will always crease for me. And I have been loving this new Cover FX powder. However, it doesn't set the under eyes as well as the Laura. So I'm gonna use Laura underneath and then the Cover FX everywhere else. But I like the Cover FX one because it maintains your skin's dewiness. And as I'm applying this powder underneath my eyes, you can still see the dry patch, see how it looks. A little more accentuated which is why I've been avoiding makeup like the plague it just needs to heal before I can start piling makeup on but I'm gonna just bear through it <laughs> ah! for bronzer I'm using my Too Faced milk chocolate soleil like I always do I really love when the this powder lands in your mouth it tastes just like chocolate I don't recommend eating it but it just tastes good when the fallout gets in your mouth <laughs> And to further chisel everything out, I'm using my Kevin O'Quan Sculpting Powder in Light. I always like to apply this right in the hollows of the cheeks and the sides of the nose. And then don't worry about it looking kind of crazy right now because I'm going to use translucent powder to really blend this out and make it look a little more decent. It's looking pretty orange right now, which is like a lot of bronzer. And to make everything look a little more chiseled and defined, I'm just going to take some of that translucent powder and cut the cheek just like this. I'm using the Cover FX powder. And normally I wouldn't highlight now, but the way I've been doing my eyeshadow doesn't have any fallout, so it won't get messy. And also I like when the highlight goes over the brow bone, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply it now. I'm using the Make It Forever Pro Light Fusion Highlighter in shade O2, which is the gold one. I'm just gonna apply it. The goal is to just have really fresh, dewy looking skin, so that is the focus and not the watery eyes. You can see I'm starting off with the high points of the cheeks and then when I go to apply it on the brow bone, I'm sweeping it over the brow and onto sort of like the temples, like right here. And I'm also gonna go ahead and apply this to the inner corner. I figured powder eyeshadows might be the culprit that was causing the eye irritation because when you do your eyeshadow, the one thing that gets in your eyes is powders. So I decided to avoid them for the week. Um, and then slowly start reincorporating them to see which one specifically would irritate my eyes. So far I've been using just chart eyeshadows because they're as natural as you can get and they've been working great on my eyes. So instead I opted for all creams on my eyes. Um, this first product is something I've had for a while and just never thought to use it. But it's a cream eyeshadow in like a liquid form. So it makes it really easy to blend versus like the thicker, heavier, creamy eyeshadows. Like the ones that come in a stick. Um, these are the Armani... What are these even called? These are the Armani Eye Tints in the matte formula. I can't really think of a more affordable option that's like this product and matte. Most products that are a liquid like this are really shimmery, so I wish I had a cheaper option. I can't think of anything, but if you just use a cream eyeshadow, that'll work as well. It's just these are super easy to blend, which I will show you guys. So basically what I was doing was applying these to the lid and lower lash line and blending them out. That way they don't actually get in your eyeball like a powder would. I should have done one eye at a time, I got carried away. But you can just see how easily these blend out. They look like a regular eyeshadow. And I'm just going back and forth between each eye so that they don't dry. <laughs> and then when it comes to the lower lash line, I would just pick it up from the applicator onto a flatter brush and then blend it onto the lower lash line. But isn't this color so pretty? This is shade number 23. And I like that they're completely matte, which is hard to find. So to add a little pop, I'm going to be using Angel's Eye Tint. This is a collab he did with Pure Cosmetics. It's in the shade Silk. And I'm just going to apply that to the center of the lid and then blend it out. These are also like a liquid cream eyeshadow, but shimmery, not matte.
And that is it for the eyes. I'm just going to work on my brows now. And first of all, I'm just going to fill in the ends with my precisely my brow pencil by Benefit in the shade 3. And the brow product I've recently been obsessed with and cannot put down. I've been getting a lot of compliments on the way I've been doing my brows lately and I keep getting asked if I've been using the soap brow technique, which I have not. However, I am interested, I gotta try it out. But what I've been using is this Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer. It does have a weird brush, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it took me a while to get used to. And this is the shade Deep Brown. So all I do is lightly comb through my brow hair. So I'm not pressing hard, I'm just you know skimming over the top of the brows. I don't know, I just really like the way it separates my brows and makes them look as if I did soap brows and makes them look bushier. I like mine brushed up, so if you don't like that, brush them straight through, but I like them going up and being fluffy and sort of untamed. And I'm just going to complete the rest of the face. This is pretty much it, but I am going to be adding mascara just at the very end. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add some blush. I'm using Tarte's Sensual. I've been loving this blush color. I've been using it a lot. I guess this wasn't a very chatty get ready with me. I guess you're supposed to tell a story. I don't know. I'm not used to these. I've only done like one other one and it wasn't like a true get ready with me since I did a voiceover. Um, but I don't know what stories I have to tell aside from my eyes. I mean, I saw the eye doctor. Um, I'm going to spritz myself with Fix Plus before doing lashes and a lip. And they just told me the same thing that they always say that my eyes are just really dry. And it's a really common thing here in California because we've been experiencing a drought. California is basically a desert now is what he said and it's just a really annoying condition to have, which is really frustrating. He did give me other options. He mentioned plugs where they go and they plug one of your tear ducts or something like that. I don't know. I just, I don't like anything happening to my eyes. I don't like people touching them. I remember crying one time at a doctor's office because I had a contact stuck up here. I don't know how I did that. And I was double stacking my contacts. It was a nightmare. And they had to numb my eye and pull out the contact. So I'm just kind of traumatized with eye doctors. I'm just going to stick to these eye drops and hope that they help. This eye right now is watering a tiny bit, but definitely not like how it was in the past. But cream eyeshadows work really well for watery eyes. In terms of an eyeliner, like a winged liner, the best eyeliner I would say is Inglot. That one does not budge. It really does stay put. You need like industrial strength makeup remover to get it off. But with all other ones, I feel like no matter what, if your eyes water, it's going to ruin your wing, especially when you're first applying it. So maybe have like a Q-tip or a tissue on hand to soak up the excess water while you're doing a wing. Um, but I highly recommend the Inglot one. I've also been avoiding eyeliner in the waterline just in case. I'm going to start incorporating it and see, you know, what sort of reaction my eyes have with an eyeliner in the waterline. So if you have this problem and you know it's not just dryness, it's something having to do with makeup, do a process of elimination, um, try certain things out, and if you notice an... Hi Mika! Hey! Get us! You like when dad's not here because I let you in the backyard all the time, huh? Kyle doesn't like me leaving Mika in the backyard by herself because she always tends to get in some sort of trouble. She digs a hole, she runs in with muddy paws. You guys saw that snap story that one day. She dug a hole, got really muddy paws. I didn't notice, she came back inside and I just saw a track or like a mud trail going into our bedroom and she was just on the white comforter rolling around in it. There was mud everywhere. And this was the same day that I had three events to go to. I was already dressed, ready to head out the door. I had to take everything off, <laughs> wash the comforter. It was a freaking nightmare, so. It's not a good day. So ever since then, she's not allowed in the backyard by herself. But when Kyle's not in town, Mika gets away with it. So now I'm going to add mascara and the mascara I've been using that hasn't irritated my eyes is Lights Camera Flashes by Tarte. Pretty sure this one doesn't have fibers in it. I read somewhere that mascaras with fibers tend to cause eye irritations. So if you guys know of any great mascaras that don't have fibers or, or are more of a natural mascara, let me know. But this one's been working and I haven't been applying a crap ton of mascara, especially not at the base. I just kind of swipe it on the edges. So I do this. I know this is really hard for a lot of us to do who love um, really big voluminous lashes and love false lashes, but false lashes definitely irritate my eyes. I know that for a fact. And also um, I've been using the Tarte eyelash glue because that one is formaldehyde free, latex free. What is that noise? So yeah, I've just been avoiding eyelashes because I just feel like they make my eyes look even worse, but this mascara works great. And finally, it's time for the lip. I have two options for you guys. If you want to keep it really soft and monochromatic, I would use a blush toned lipstick. This is Brown Blush by Maybelline. It's one of their new um, matte sensational lip colors. I love this color. I wore it in New York and a lot of you guys asked what it was. Pretty sure they're out already. If not, I will list in the description box when it does come out. 
So this is lip option number one, very monochromatic, very soft and dusty. I really love this lip color. And then for another option, I'm gonna do a really vibrant, dark, vampy lip to kind of spice this up and make it more of an evening look. And this is lip option number two. This is Jade's collaboration with Pure Cosmetics. So I have Angel on my eyes, Jade on my lips. This is the liquid lipstick in the shade Empress. And this is such a beautiful, deep plum, but it's a little more um, vibrant. It's just, I don't think I own a color like this. This is so pretty, good job. Jade and Angel, these are amazing collaborations. Um, I do feel like uh, the blush is a little brown, so I'm gonna add a pinch of Tarte's blush in the shade Blushing Bride. And with the second lip option done, that completes this video. I hope those of you out there with extremely watery eyes found this helpful. It's gonna give your eyeballs a nice break because you're not applying anything that's physically going into your eyes, like a powder eyeshadow or a liner in the waterline. So definitely give this a try and see if it works out for you. If you also have watery eyes, dry eyes, eye allergies, eye irritations, comment down below on what's worked for you. Maybe give some suggestions or tips on what we can do um, to help each other out and overcome this tragic eye situation because from the looks of it, it seems like a lot of us suffer from the same thing. So definitely chime in on a healthy conversation down below. Be kind to one another. Don't put each other down. Anytime the topic is health related, I feel like people get really aggressive and defensive, but just engage in a healthy conversation with one another. We're just trying to help each other out. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. I will be going back to a normal filming schedule, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.